we're going. Show me a fat ass. Sweat Equity Podcast. Jared Waters, our guest, flexing. Mm. If you're watching on video, you know how to talk into a mic. You done stand up? Still some muscle in there. Stand up comedian. Still some muscle in there. Future podcaster. There we go. Former backup to running back Chris Johnson. That's a lie. No. <laughs> at East Carolina University. Uh, What's the truth? I wasn't. I would, I, he I, told I, me I, that. I, I walked on, but it, I didn't. I walked on as like a corner. So you told like, me. You told me you. Were, I said his locker was right next to mine. Pull, no, you, I said you were running back, and you said yeah. In high school, I was a running back in high school. Okay. And when but, I went to ECU, I walked on. I walked on the spring ball. Let's put it this way: it's ECU. Yeah. Chris Johnson goes down. I remember his You're gonna be a backup because they're gonna be like, uh. You talk to him. They're gonna look around the locker room like you we gotta him. get a black yeah. guy in there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know where he is now. I don't think he's in the league. Anymore. He's out. He's he's done. Yeah, he'll probably there'll probably be a story. I bet probably late August where he'll sign, like he'll get a. No, I think he'll get Arizona, a look. That was his last run. He had a really good season. Then he welcomed no. Adrian Peterson to the team, <laughs> and AP took his spot. So someone someone will tear their ACL in training camp, and he'll get a look. I bet. But that'll be about it. I actually he's, don't know. He might be with 35, Arizona. Thirty-five. Thirty-five. Yeah. I don't know. Thirty-five. Yeah, I think probably. he might be 35 years I old. I say that I always forget. Like 35 in NFL is uh, 887. You're old too, dude. I know. Well, I'm like you I'm 34. That. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what that's what I was gonna say. I'm 34, and I'm like, oh yeah. Well, he's my age. What's the big deal? Yeah. NFL life, yeah. 35, yeah. So you're back from New York. You're that's in town right now. I'm in doing stand up right yes, at, uh, at the club up north. Side Splitters Comedy Club. That's where I'll be. You don't have to plug them. It's all right. <laughs> this, this isn't going live. So. Oh. <laughs> we, tr- we were trying to go live, and then um, we're dumb. Mevo sucks is what happened. This Mevo camera we love, it auto-directs No, we you. don't. I, Fuck it's Mevo. A, it's a love-hate. It's, uh, it's, it it's cool for the price, but we mess up the settings of some sort. We don't do anything wrong. I right. blame us. No. I, I internalize first. No. Because I'm a football player. I do too. Yes. It's your fault. But in this case, we it shouldn't be this hard. The team didn't fumble the ball. You fumbled. Nice little delay. I like the delay. <laughs> Five second delay. I'm going to yeah. have to geek your mic up, I think. I forgot how soft spoken you are. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate you coming in. Hey, no problem. And Eric what? loves how we start the show with the little ha. Toddy, God Almighty, what <laughs> sweat equity? What do you think of that, Jared? Podcast. I thought he was doing Kamehameha from Dragon Ball Z. That's what I thought he was doing. What's that? Ka- I'd rather that. Kamehameha. <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. I'd Goku, rather that. Dragon Ball Z. We can incorporate anime. It. <laughs> I bet if you did that, you'd get a whole lot more fans. All those Dragon Ball Z nerds that come there. It's a Dragon Ball Z podcast. I have a, I have a friend that worked with me as an assistant at one point, and he was a huge Dragon. So you're hanging out with him all day, and he would bring up Dragon Ball Z <laughs> all the time. And I'm like, "You're a fucking man. What are you talking? I, look, I get it. If that's your thing, they just brought it back too. Oh, I saw. I'm, I'm like, seasons. look. To me, that is like anime porn almost. Like, if that's your thing, like that's your thing. But if I tell you I'm not into it, I'm not into it. Right. Drop it. I, I don't need to. Bro- uh, if you're not into football, I'm not going to bring up football to you. You know, like yeah. Uh, unless you want to know more about the game. Which how do you not live great. in this world and know anything about football? You know, I. It's I don't weird. know anything about Harry Potter, and I get upset when people talk to me about it because I don't know anything about it. I don't want to know anything about it because nope. my friend broke it down this way. He read all the books. He's older than I. He's five years older than I am, uh, which means he's four years older than Chris Johnson. And he uh, he was saying, he was telling me like every time they get in the jam in the book, they just go, "Oh, we have magic," right. and we just, <laughs> we just get out of it. So I'm just like, why would I ever pick that up now? Why would I ever? The it's, movies are better. I, I guess. I was going to wait. I haven't even watched Wait till your kids movies. get older. Yeah, the kids will want to get into it. I'll the ride it is nice them. at uh, Universal Studios. I've Where heard that. It's that sick. is a nice ride. I didn't know anything walking inside it. Everyone's like, this is a Gryffindor. I was like, I don't know. I'm here <laughs> for the ride, man. So I have a no theme park stance that I've put down. <laughs> er- drop that. I start, it's only Disney World, really. So Universal might might work, but I'm never going to Disney World. You don't. Have, you got kids, man. Never going. 
Yes, you'll have, go. You've been, you'll, right? You'll go. Yeah, I went when I was little, but I I, I don't you'll, I have like dude. a dude. You have a daughter. You'll go. I don't want them indoctrinated <laughs> into this garbage. Like okay. we're they're they're Disney. Okay, I thought the same shit. The but weird. Dude, it's easier if no, no, you just bend I said this, over and let it right, happen. Right. I, this just is my accept. one thing. You don't I don't like your kids liking Star Wars. They can be into it. That's Disney. They're not like, oh, it's the conglomerate. That's <laughs> Disney, man. They're not tying it together. They're not tying together Marvel. They're making, th- Look, they're if, making a Star Mickey, Wars Mickey, land they're little in now. Disney World. Yeah. I, cool. I'm not going. <laughs> because it's Disney. He'll go. It's hot as shit. He's going to go. I'll go to Bush Gardens. No. I'll go, yeah. I'll go November to Adventure cool Park. Off. Take your daughter there. I'll go to, I almost went to Dinosaur World today if I had him today. Get the fuck. My... My wife and kids went to Dinosaur World this morning. Synchronicity, dude. Man. That is fucking weird. We have a lot of these weird uh, coincidences like that. D- Sorry, we never, we never, to, we've uh, never, we've <laughs> never once, we've no. never once talked about Dinosaur Land or World that or whatever is so it is. Dino creepy. World. My business attorney and friend Steve Fantetti, uh, your, <laughs> FantettiLegal.com, Your business for fine. I'll do a plug for him. He uh, he was gonna take his son out there, and I was like, "Well, if I'm watching the kids, maybe we'll we'll tag." It's up. It's good. It's they have dinosaurs, and then they also have a lot of playgrounds for the kids, which is what it's all about. Wear them down, and it's just regular, you know, park but playgrounds. But Jared's a har- Jared's a hardcore Christian. I don't think he's down with dinosaur world. I think it's I'm uh, down with dinosaurs. Cre- creationism. They problem. might be dinosaurs. It might be real. Might be dinosaurs in the Bible. Maybe. I don't think. Uh, I've I've read a lot of the Bible. I don't think. I don't well, you got to think about the word dinosaur came out in what eighteen hundred something. The Bible came out before that, so they probably didn't know well, what they were to describe. I don't have my laptop there you to have verify. It. I can't probably like it. dragons. They probably thought they were dragons walking around. Or I big can't beat whatever. that logic. So it was probably they called it something else. Airtight. Yeah. 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 What is there to argue? Might be a dinosaur. In Maybe there. the burning bush was a burning triceratops. Who knows? Might be a bush, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it might have been dinosaurs in there. What about There's bones they there. maybe set the fire? What do you think about that? The the thing about biblical times, they were accidentally doing acid and uh, love it. And who's doing acid? So there's the theory. What was the the theory? Is the burning bush was, oh, was the weed. acacia tree, which is high in DMT, and it was a metaphor for. Moses doing and DMT God. or doing whatever uh, or they really psychedelics. Thought, they really thought they saw it. Or they were high on DMT and or acid or probably not acid. It wasn't invented for 500 years, whatever. But mushrooms, something, and they thought the shit was on fire. Yeah. Something like that. Thoughts? Well, that, I know that. I think it's more of a metaphor. My bad. That story, I know Locked it happened. Out. It happened. Uh oh. You all right? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Oh, the. Uh, well, when I was out there in Egypt, they told me that story happened in Egypt, and that part isn't known for growing any psychedelics. They're telling me like this. Yeah. So I don't know. Man. Well, the, I, don't I don't think it's. I don't think they. He was on like an. I think he maybe saw him. I went up to those mountains, those Mount Sinai. Yeah. That's what they're talking about. I went to those mountains, and they were like very, telling me like, no, this is where Moses came up here and saw it all like went that. down. Then they told me ISIS was just here three days ago, and I was like, well, let's keep well, climbing. Time I'm to get in here. the truck and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so say. I won't shave this beard. No, I, <laughs> that's what they thought. Most of yeah. them thought I was like Egyptian when they were talking to me. Yeah, you could probably blend in. They're just like, oh, the beard. You're, f- you're from Egypt? Yeah. Because like, I thought I would have to tuck my cross and like, no, where the cross? This is Jesus lived in Egypt, so we're very excited about that. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> I would go no, like, no, no nothing. Even though that's kind of the point of wearing it is a little bit to show people that you... So I had no idea, like, the guys on the tour, like, they're, like, religious Christians and stuff like that. Because mm. they're, like, you know, they're, like, thick eyebrows, and they're, like... One guy had a gun on him, had a gun on his side, gun on his back... And they're all like walking me and there's like this white blonde girl and this other white dude. So we're like walking around Egypt with all these security guards. And then uh <laughs> and then after that, I was like I was like, I probably look Egyptian. And he's like, No, we know we're the Americans. Like, how can you tell the Americans? He goes, Wait till the music plays. <laughs> I was like, What happens when music plays? Like Americans can't stop dancing. <laughs> and I was like, what? I love that about really? America. That's what he said. He's like, if you're on a party, he goes, The Americans are the first one to start dancing. Hell yeah. And Dad then when the dance. music came on, I just I didn't realize I was the first one to start dancing, getting people yeah, on the that's dance That's the floor. only positive stereotype about Americans I've heard. Really? I've never heard days. that one. He said they, they're the first ones to start dancing. Hmm. <laughs> I was like, I could be Canadian. He goes, Americans dance. They always dance when huh. their songs come on. They're always jumping and always dancing. I thought he was going to say, 
wait till the song comes on because it's going to be like, and then all the Americans just sit there like, oh, fuck this. As soon as that came on, I started dancing. Like, hey, Allah, and then all these people started dancing. And they're like, yep, there goes the American. I was like, yeah, maybe. This I was in Egypt? In. I was in Egypt, yep. I was and in you, Cairo. Is that the same trip you went to Tel Aviv? Did you? Yeah, uh, yeah. How was that? Tel Aviv was nice. I really want to go good. there. I don't know why. You we're going to skip over go. the pyramids and the Sphinx and all that? Um, Already we'll in Tel Aviv? We can, we can come back, yeah. Okay. You know, Robbie Shlok is from, he's from Israel. Yeah, no. His family's, yeah, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Stand-up comedian he's from really, Tampa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The man out there just did Conan. Shout out to Robbie Shlok. Uh, yeah, he hasn't come on this podcast. I keep forgetting about that. Huh? Yeah, bring him down, man. I think that's on purpose. I think he'll be down here in like November or something. Wrote for John Stewart show for a little bit. That Jewish uh, show they, that went away. Uh, but Don, I think Stewart canceled it just because. He no, was I like, know. I'm I just think saying. this. I think the idea was I think to do news topics, animate it that day, and get an animation out the <laughs> night that night. But we're not. The technology isn't there yet, to right. my understanding. That'd be really tough because you can't. He was saying you can't beat YouTube and you can't beat the cable stations that are already commenting on it or Twitter. So it's like, what's the point? Yeah, you just got to do a live card and animation. Because the value of having animation doesn't beat, you know, the latency on the uh, on the joking on whatever happened. Well, with face recognition, like through the iPhone and stuff, they could do it like that. They could make little characters and comment on them. I'm sure, but it, it's still. It's an expensive show. Yeah. Anyway, you cut it. It normally takes like two years for them to animate those movies, and then they do the voiceover and they send it back and all that shit. Yeah, they send it takes it forever. To Korea, I think. Yeah. Although yeah. South Park is, I don't know if you saw that documentary. One they day they do it in one day, it's right? It's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, they they got that SNL process where they just make themselves crazy, and it whatever works, that's their formula. I was thinking yeah. about that the other day because I was I was in here working really late, and I was like. Doing website development, and I was like, this is so much better just to knock it out and not talk to anybody and just do it in one full day kind of thing mm-hmm. than trying to piecemeal this project out. Some stuff works better that way, but I think if you have all the materials to build the house, it's much better just do it in one day than just waiting and just hurry up and wait and then knock it out while stressed you about it. Yeah. yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I've been thinking a lot about that. Anyway, uh, Tel Aviv. Went to Tel Aviv. Uh, I was actually staying in this place called Migdal Hammock. I was staying in a kibbutz in like northern Israel. I was working my uh, s- s- program, program called Talmud, like for teachers, like American teachers going and teaching in Israel. So like the CEO of my school like sent an email, like, you want to do it? And I was like, sure, I'll do it because nobody else is doing it. And I was like, anybody else do it? And they're like, yeah, you should do it. Uh-huh. So I went out there, f- supposed to be for two months, and I extended for another two months. And then I was like, I'll just travel while I'm out there. So yeah. I was going to stand up out there, met all those Israeli comics. How was th- I want to hear about that. What's the scene? I actually had a strong scene. A lot of those guys are like really famous. Man, just, all I Jews. don't know who. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of competition. A lot of good writing out there. It was, it was Not different. a lot of stool fucking. It's, uh, no, it's, it's a lot of different because Israelis, like they don't, they consider themselves Israelis, not Jewish. Some of them are not religious. You know what I mean? And you're like, hey, man, hey. So it's just you're Jewish. So that's like they they don't consider themselves as Jews. They know they're Jewish when they're here, but some of them's like we're Israelis. We're happy to be Israeli. This is our country. We fought hard to be Israeli. It's like all right, cool. But a lot of the comics, it's I went to a Hebrew club, so they gave me a hard time in the beginning because I was like, hey, I'm a comic from New York. That was everything else. I didn't say New York. I was like, hey, you really, I was the, you really set me up for some. I'm trying not to. <laughs> I didn't do that. Easy. No, I was in easy the paper. The jokes. I, I was a, in no, the I, I was in the paper. They wrote this big article about me, so I showed them the paper. Like, hey, what? I'm doing it. Yeah, they like Israel, they wrote me a big article inside the paper about like what I was doing and first, teaching. First black guy, probably, <laughs> probably was. <laughs> I think I probably parade. was. So they gave me all this press. So I was using the press. It was like, hey, I'm a comic, starting to t- everything else. And the lady goes, so do you speak Hebrew? I was like, no. She's like, why would you want to do the club? This is a Hebrew club. Oh. And I was like, what happens when Louis C.K. comes there? You guys gonna get a translator for him? She goes, are you Louis C.K. I was like, good point, good Ooh, point. And yeah. then I was like... I am jerking off. So then the owner, because I was texting, I guess I was talking to like the secretary, then the owner, he's a comic, he's, he comic started the club. He goes, hey, come out, hang out. I can't get you on, but hang out. And I know what that meant, just see what can happen, just to see if I would go. Yeah, wait in the back of the room. So I went there, and he goes, oh, you're the comic, yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes, someone drops out, maybe I could put you up. Then somebody dropped out, and I was like, yep, let's do it. So let's let's th- I'm gonna throw this into a little bit of the uh, the theme of the podcast, kind of motivation or kind of pragmatic business advice. And a lot of stand up, it's it's very similar to being any any kind of entrepreneur you want to be. Like, correct. Just be around it, and you don't know what's gonna happen. Like sponging off of people, 
like you want to do whatever you want to be a welder but they're not giving you the opportunity just go hey can i come and sweep the floors can i come and just hang out when y'all are going over the plans or something like that being in the dugout yeah i'll yeah i'll be in that nappy dugout all day i'll, I'll i'm here i'll do whatever it takes to kind of learn and that's kind of what you have to do in stand up i got all my gigs when i lived in la just not by being I wasn't a douchebag to every, anybody because everybody has this weird ego right. at every level, which is insane. And then uh, I would go do open mics, and I just keep going to shows like these smaller, you know, shows that I could definitely like hold my own on. They weren't like the the Laugh Factory Comedy Store, but they were like, you know, uh, produced shows by comedians, but like the good ones. Right. And I, I would just I'd be there. I would just show up and not be weird, <laughs> and be polite. And, like, that would go so far. And I think that is a crazy lesson just in anything you want to do in business is, like, don't have the ego about being, you know, bottom of the totem pole. And I guess sometimes, like, knowing that the people who are are at the top of the totem pole, they're not, they're, they're not... They're not thinking about you. ...going to shun you. Yeah, they're not thinking about you're taking their spot. So there you can approach them. Even though, like, some, you know, I'm pretty sure a janitor can't approach a CEO and ask for a business meeting. But, like, it maybe can happen, but, like, sometimes I could talk to comments that I probably never thought I'd talk to, and they're just, like, cool, like, oh, yeah, what are you doing? How are you trying to do this? And I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that you were so accessible. Yeah, it depends how exclusive the the industry you're trying to get into, you know. Or that they didn't do all the same shit you're having to go through right. at that point. I think that, right. too, right. yeah. I lot think of, most of, C- of them did. A lot of CEOs, you know, they may start out at a, at a C-suite level position or, you know, right underneath that and work their way up, so... You know, it it's kind of like that with the uh, the app kind of software guys because they all they all started in their garage or whatever right. or in a, a shitty apartment or something like that and made some disruptor thing. And I've found some people I've talked to very just super approachable because they still have that empathy of how shitty they were like seven years ago kind of right. thing. So all right, so you went to the club. I uh, went to the club, hung out. Well, I knew I went to the club to see what was going on. So I was just talking to all the comics, and they're like, you know, what their version of New York was way different than what the version that I lived in. You know, they're just like basing off TV, like, what is it like, you know, 500 people every night at the clubs, right? I was like, no, it's not <laughs> like that. He's like, the cellar. I was like, it's only 60 seats. What? 60 seats? Yeah. I was like, it's their small rooms, man. He goes, oh, what about the ceilings? Yeah. Eight feet. Right. The open mics. I bet it's like 10 minutes. I was like, it's two minutes, and there's 60 comedians going up at. He goes, so they were just very, like, they are trying to get a just of, like, American comedy. And then I respected the fact that some of them, like, we didn't want to, some of them was like, why don't you just translate your jokes to English? He goes, I don't want to be that hacky comic with the voice, with the gimmick. I was like, oh, I get that. That's respectable. Yeah. There's some not- of them had, like, comedy specials. Some of them had, like, hour specials that they had on, like, other platforms and stuff. Does everybody speak English? Pretty much. They yeah. speak he- They speak Hebrew, but, like, when I went on stage, the audience was trying really hard to understand my jokes. Sure, so it was just sure. like a laugh delay. So they would get they really love impressions. So like impressions yeah. and everything else. But when we were for Hebrew club, they they get excited if you know any language. So like I would change a punchline to like their language and they would like erupt and be you, like Do you remember? How'd you do that? Yeah, uh, I think one of my jokes is about albinos, so I learned what albino meant in <laughs> Hebrew and I said it and they were just like, Oh, <laughs> <laughs> they like, they we like, hate them too. They like pointed to one and I was like, Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There happened to be a whole busload of them. I imagine the cat skills, but that's just my ju- my judar kind it of. It sort of reminded me of Miami, Florida. It sort of reminded oh, me. Of. <laughs> just like the beach, everyone's like makes there. So they're all like swirly people and everything like that. Except they're hard. They're they're all of them are like they are very tough. Tough people. Tough people because you got to go in the army right after high school for yeah, a three year. years. Three years. Three years. Women have to go so for the two chi- years. Chicks are hot because they're all kind of jacked. Yeah, they you got. Know, they're walking around with guns. They're walking around with guns. They're walking off like M sixteens. They stuff don't have like that, that entitlement thing too. If you uh, talk to any like chicks from from Tel Aviv or whatever, they're all, you know, they're better to talk to because they're they're way more humble. They don't have this thing of like, I'm trying to be a Kardashian model, Instagram right. model kind of thing. They, well, some of them are. They are sure, but that's because they're hot and they got on there. But they're not. That's not something they're pushing to do. It's like Correct. you know, they were already they already went in the army, you know. <laughs> um, yeah. I uh I think I was talking to freak I was talking to someone uh like when I was teaching out there a lot of the parents were telling me cuz I was like you guys don't discipline your kids or anything like that and the parents were telling me, like 
we don't want to discipline them. Some of them we don't want to discipline them because they're going to go to the army anyways and get disciplined. Mm. And I was like, I don't oh, know about that. they want to yeah. mail it in, right? So some of them I probably like, do the same thing. I know me too. <laughs> right. So I guess <laughs> that, you know they're like that. So some of them were like very. Some of the kids were like very like the school I was at. Like it was a wild school, and I just asked them. And they're like, oh, they're going to the military anyways. They'll straighten it out. <laughs> They'll learn. Like, oh, well, all right. So I thought about that area just like uh, I I've heard about uh, South Korea where everybody's tried to fight South Korea. My wife's from there, so it's kind of like. I, obviously, I pay attention to it a lot more, but it's it's that thing of like, oh yeah, Japan, North Korea, Russia, China have all tried to take them over, uh, and not even like that long ago, like all within like fifty years, something like that, like the last hundred years or something like that. So they're, if you watch Korean movies, they're fucking hard. They are the old boy. Remember they tried to remake it here with Spike Lee doing it. I I, I refuse to watch it, but that's like. The best revenge movie, but also one of the hardest movies to watch, like you'll ever see. I'm not into that anymore. No, it's yeah. worth look. It's worth war seeing once. No, it's not right. a war movie. Even still, it, dude, you'd love it because it's it's weird. It's like uh, you don't know what's going on. You just it starts with this guy trapped in an apartment, right. like jail cell. You seen it? Uh, I seen clips and, of it. Shout out to my Koreans out there. We respect you and your culture. <laughs> <laughs> know what I mean? Not my stay. <laughs> Close <What>? enough. <laughs> and he. But he's tra- he's training himself to fight in this apartment complex. It's one of the best action movies, I think, too. It's on Netflix still? Um, I don't know. You have to find the new one, yes, I think, but if you change your VPN, the old, you'll see. Old old boy. Okay, old old boy. It's yeah. not that old. It's only like two thousand three. For that I guess when small countries, I guess for them to be such a small country, I was like everyone was just like really nice. Like I work with a lot of Israeli people and they're like the sweetest people in the world. They're very caring and they're very like understanding of culture. It's like, oh, what what was sure. it like growing up? Stuff like that. Sure. So I it's like the Muslims though, right? I don't like them. Actually, no, no. A lot of them are Arab. You know, they're Arab, Arabic. Some of them are like Arabic Israelis. So they're very cool. There's like a Muslim population in Israel that I met. There's oh. like a mix of everything. So it's just like a melting pot a little bit. So Everyone it's not from. a universal hatred. It's no. not. Like, it's not like uh, these are good things to hear. Yeah, I don't know. I I would think the this demarcation line was just the border. Well, this you dude know? told me well, this, this guy. The Egyptians told me he goes. You know, we sort of missed when the Jews were there, when the Jewish people were there, because that it was three people. It was like Christians, Jewish people, and Muslims. So now it's just like only. So now like one group has got really big, but he goes. It used to be divided of like three different three religions. three groups that three hate groups each other. That, <laughs> He said it was peace. I mean, I don't. I never lived there. You know, it's a shout out to the Middle East. I don't know that yeah. much. I, I can't speak on that one, but I know that that's what he told well, me. Like the tour guy was just like, it used to be. We'll target this. Uh, th- we'll do a Facebook ad, target some people in Tel Aviv, and see if they like this. Giza. <laughs> I want to see. I, we have the power to do it. It's not that hard. Right. We we're nerds. We know how to fucking do the that nerd shit. But I'm interested to see what that feedback might be. You know, to be like <laughs> that. Yeah. I. Uh, yeah, I was just more like a sponge. So I was like, so I went to Palestine. I went to like uh, Bethlehem, where like, where is the birthplace of Jesus? And you know, talking to them. So it's always curious, like how everyone feels. Did like, you bring any it. myrrh, frankincense? Yeah, I know? did. I brought some myrrh back. Oh yeah. Yeah, you rub it on your back. Yeah, they said like it helps. Like uh, your myrrh man. They say it helps <laughs> your like. <laughs> how long have you had that in your back pocket? No, man, I'm just letting it rip. Oh, man, yeah. It's just when Jared's here, I'm, I'm gonna let it rip. Merman, merman, and barnacle boy. I think it, they said it, it helps your like soothes like pain. Myrrh, Franks and myrrh. I bought a lot of Franks and myrrh, like a bottle in there. So I put inside my humidifier, let that thing shoot up in the air. You know what I mean? Yeah, and you're like Jesus. Shoot it inside it. Shout out to Bethlehem. Are you, you know going? What I mean? Are you going? You're one of the rare comedians I know that goes to church uh, right. on the reg. Shout out to n- church. <laughs> shout out to church. Are we writing all these down? Um, <laughs> a lot of shout outs. Well, it's an interesting thing Middle where East. you're like, you, you go do stand up, talk about some of the m- most horrible things you can. Not you necessarily. Your your act's not really uh, like mine, but uh, <laughs> in that direction. But uh, you do, you will say like whatever, and then the next right. day, or you, I used to do this a little bit. I'd go on the road and I just try to find a church, just so uh, it gave me a, a sense of just like some kind of routine. Because when you're on the road, you lose your mind a little bit. Right. Yeah. I it, understand that. Does that kind of help you get a routine uh, while you're in? Because New York is kind of like there's so much stuff moving around, and you feel like I don't know. This is how I felt about LA. There's four backup things to do during the day. There's always something to do and you feel you get the FOMO thing where you're like, ah shit, I wish I would have gone to that instead of mm-hmm. doing this all day or something. But sometimes I feel like that 
like when I like when I'm watching stand like oh I should have went to that show I should have did this I should have yeah. hang out more I should have been all of that should have went to Brooklyn should have did that but like my Sundays uh, I think church starts at oh, I know it starts at eleven and I pretty much work there from like eight setting up and stuff like that I think I've been doing it since I've been young so it's not really different I mean there's a period where I didn't go to church at all when I was like in college and I was like figuring things out again but for me Should it's I be a cornerback or a running back. <laughs> That I, was basically it, right? I guess you know you just got to find out, find the religion for yourself. You got to start believing in things that you know. Some sometimes you want you don't want to believe off a of feeling. You want to actually have, you want to feel exactly what you've been what you've been trained on the whole time. So like for me, when I go to church, especially like that, I know that if I can do all this stuff all late at night, I can come to church on Sunday and help somebody. Yeah, a friend, you know? a, fr- a friend of mine put it this way: is like. So what if you don't sleep eight hours? Like, just go. It's at 930, whatever. Just go. Just go. You're going to meet somebody. You're going to feel better. You're going to meet somebody not having a bad time. I think or one just time. just sit there and just be quiet for an hour. That's what I do. Like, that's, okay. I'll, I'll go. Seriously. Like, that's the best sell I have so to, far. Uh, I have to sit there. I'm going to try to go tomorrow, and I haven't been in a while. And it it is something where I don't f- – like, this is good mentally for me because you don't really have a forced conversation for an hour – Right. Not forced in a bad way, but like, wh- how many times do you have a conversation a week where you're talking for an hour and you don't look at your phone pretty much the whole time? Well, my church, everyone has phones now, so you can't tell if they're checking on their phone or writing your Bibles on your phone now. So you keep so busy, like that. Ah. People uh, are looking at their uh, Bible apps. Up. You can see people on Instagram and stuff like that. You can see people streaming the service uh, and everything. I'm helping my church for their stuff uh, awesome. as a, like a donate, like a donating time kind of thing, because we try to do like something once a quarter uh, mm-hmm. for charity wise community wise and i know they need help and i was helping them out uh and i was like because they're basically they have the same context uh, as a lot of stand-ups like you you're talking to about it could be 100 people could be 300 people you know it's a show of, of sorts to some people yeah might be a show the headliner he does 45 then you got the moderator some guys She's are funny doing- yeah, you know, so my my pastor I think is really funny. It's a husband and wife team too, so it's like that's what I got. Yeah, so the the wife she's cool. She just knows she's not like joking. She's not that kind of. She's doing run ins. She's like she's yeah, got she's a chair. Set, she's all set up. She's got a folding chair. <laughs> yeah, she she comes in with a pie. That's something I'm getting over. I'm getting over. I have no problem with a funny preacher. That's his personality. But one time I was talking to this minister and he literally walked up to me and goes. You know, I'm thinking about doing an open mic, man. Really thinking about getting up there. You know, people said I was funny in college. I was like, yeah, move away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah, don't want that no. life. What the? F- what? <laughs> no. What? Sometimes I think it's offensive to me to walk up to me and be like, oh, I see what you're doing. I think I can do that. <laughs> I'm like you. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let me preach tomorrow. Let Dude, me do you that have an open mic once a week with a captive audience. What do you want? Yeah. Well, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, some. I, yeah, they, I can't so speak. They, the, the difference it's, with them, they have a board of directors, which is always some. some I mean, some. Board. Yeah, some church boards and stuff like that. Like my dad, he's he's a minister. He's funny. He's a funny guy. He has funny Shout stuff, but dad. he's not. He's not trying to. I know he's not running bits and stuff like that and doing callbacks throughout your, the service. What's your dad's <laughs> name? His name's Esau. Esau. Yeah, like the Bible. Nice. Shout out to Esau. Shout out to Esau. We didn't give him proper one. Big E. That's I'm gonna, what we call I'm gonna him. send this to him. Yeah. I'll find I'll find his email. Uh yeah. So uh my my, my dad he's uh he's a very funny guy. He's funny everything else. But I know he's not gonna go to open mic. I know he's not gonna be running tags. I know he's not gonna be doing setups. So I think it's a it's a fine line. You could be a funny preacher because you gotta you know you gotta mingle with people. But then like, if you ever talk to me about stand up and I'm just like, yeah, what is? I don't know why. Why I think like now since I'm in New York now I feel like since I'm doing it, like I just feel like it's. It's kind of disrespectful to walk up to somebody and see somebody who's like working really hard, who's left his lifestyle and left another state, and he's coming out here to be like, "Hey, man, I want to do what you do for fun." Well, I'll I'll, 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 give, wanna, you the, I'll yeah. give you the other side of that. It it's made to look easy, right? It's made to look like it's fun. It doesn't look easy. No, it it no. I don't look at Dave Chappelle like, oh wow, that's gr- look how easy that is. He actually see, does make it look easy. I was see, watching it this morning. You see it through yeah. you see it through a different prism though. I'm Correct. saying the the ger- general audience. They're either there's a sliver of them that know, like they know how hard it is and it kind of makes them anxious a little bit. Uh, if you've ever walked in the back of a room and you can kind of feel it, some people are like you can feel uh, it's a little palpable kind of nervousness for the show Correct. almost. But I would say most people do not have that kind of insight or do not think about it past 
oh man, that looks like a lot of fun. I'm a I'm a gregarious person. But I make I, people laugh at church. It's it's like that, but now like if I know that you want to do stand up, now I'm gonna think you're always running bits. <laughs> oh, trying yeah. them out. And I'm not gonna take anything you said seriously because now I know you want to be funny and that's your goal is to try to be a stand up comic. And if you want to be a stand up comic, cool, be a stand up comic. But now I don't know if you're just trying to run bits by me or you're literally a funny guy. Like I don't know. Now I feel like you're talking directly to me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna tell any more jokes. I'm no, done. it's not even no, it's you could be a funny stand up. You're funny I could be a funny person, but it's like you know, like some like police officers, right? Some police officer comics. Last time I was in Tampa, it's a true story. I was driving my dad's car. His van didn't have a tail light. I didn't know. Yeah, I was yeah. driving. Yeah, Mr. Waters. Shout and, out uh, to Ezel. Shout out to <laughs> shout out to pops. And uh, I, he didn't tell me the tail light's broken, so I got stopped by the cops. And I'm like in Brandon, so it's like it's like eight o'clock in the morning. So the cops stops me and take off my hat. You know, I don't know where anything is in his van, so I was like, here's my ID. Oh boy. I just came from New York. Gave him everything else, gave him the insurance, everything else. He goes, good. And he goes, are you nervous? I was like, no, I'm good. And he was like, I'm nervous you. right now. Yeah. Right. But I know I'm in Florida. I know where I am. So I know, you know, Hand, take off my hat, hands on the wheel, everything else. Not going to say something, yes, sir, no, sir. And then four more cars pull up. Just I mean, start grimacing now. Right. What, uh, before four, you get beat. <laughs> four, just pre-grimace. Four more cars pull up. the bitch ball. <laughs> you know the bitch ball where you get your ass kicked and you're just like, <laughs> I was like, well. <laughs> I was I was in a good I was like we're on Bloomingdale so I was like I know nothing's gonna happen at Bloomingdale there's all these families and stuff out there suburban <laughs> suburban, suburban area crawl and it's I'm driving a big van so they're probably like nothing so they probably just maybe it was a tail light maybe it was so then all these four more cops pull up oh my this big God. black dude jumps out and they're talking for like ten minutes I was like oh man what I was like, I thought I got a because I got a I got a parking ticket in New York and I was like oh f it's probably that parking ticket that I just freaking got my car towed. Because I was like, I thought I had 20 more days to pay it off. So that's oh, yeah. what I was thinking. You're running down this list of all the shitty things you've done. <laughs> I only had one thing. I was like, why would they pull up something from New York? And then the big black dude walks up and goes, hey, man, this is your expired tags. We're gonna get, I mean, we'll give you a warning for the taillight, but I just want to talk to you about something else. Because he didn't tell me where you were yesterday. Is it because there was a murder and your name was there? And you're the person we're what? looking for. I kid you not. I put that on everything. Did not he see that coming. He said that to me. And I'm like, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna, gonna be honest die. with you, man. I was like, I was in Cuba yesterday, man. I was literally in Cuba. Oh, like, that's good, a good place. Good to be. alibi. I literally, I literally was in Cuba yesterday, and I was in Cuba yesterday. I was like, I'm only in here for a show downtown. And he goes, I know, man. <laughs> I saw you on the flyer, man. I was just joking with you. Have a good night. Have oh, a good day. Hilarious, hilarious and I was, joke. I was not. Oh. Afterwards, he we didn't joke. even say somebody murdered last night or something he like. He said someone that. was murdered last night, and you're the person that we're looking for. And that's, he just looks at me. But he could have done but, a joke about murdering at the hilarious. club. And then his, then he goes, "My partner told me you're really nervous." And I was like, "Cause there's a big black dude walked up there," and I was just like. I All right. Know. If you want to do an open mic, you do that at an open mic. You know what I mean? Like now, I no don't way. know. No way. I'm on the cop side. That's fucking hilarious. They're bored all day, too. Right. But do you know how scared? Yeah. Someone could, I, but I wasn't really scared because I was like, no, nah, I was in Cuba. And he's like, what? I was like, I can show you pictures, man. I was in pictures. Cuba. <laughs> he goes, what? I was like, I was in Cuba yesterday. And he goes, no, we're, there's, we're looking for you. Somebody was killed. And I was like, yeah, man. I was, I was like, well, you could just take me in now, but I'm pretty sure I wasn't. And he goes, no, I was just, my partner told me you're very nervous and stuff like that. So just joking around with you. I think you're a comic writer or something like that. Oh, it's a, like, oh, oh, don't get me wrong. This is annoying for it's you. It's funny, I, yeah. I, I but get I was just it. Like, but on my side, it's really funny. It's hilarious. For them, yes, I think probably course. had a good stick out of it. Then my boy Max White was like, get his freaking badge number and turn him in and all the other stuff. He's white. And I was, yeah, you know, yeah, Max. And I was just like, <laughs> I'm good, man. They got their joke out of the day. They got their thrill of it. But I was like, you want to keep the jokes on stage? You know what I mean? That's a white people move, though. It's like, get get his badge number, and we're gonna call. We're gonna call tomorrow, get and it. I'm gonna set it up. I'll set it. I'll put. I'll I'll, I'll form a, a formal complaint. I'll put that, it in. That was a really good joke that they did. But I was just like, what if it was someone? I was thinking like, what if it was my dad driving? Because my dad, he's a veteran, so he probably would have said something smart. He was, was he on the flyer? No, it was the flyer wasn't in the car. You know, it was just like. But he just thought. I think one of them saw me somewhere. And was yeah, like, oh, the partner. Car. It sounded like the partner saw you. Yeah. I think your dad would have been safe. Yeah. It's kind of exclusive to you. Off, I right. think. But I was just been like, I don't, well, you know. Esau could have gone to jail. Who knows what? The That's what I'm saying. So it's just like sometimes, like you're being funny. Well, Esau cool. may not be that cool. Like, you want to be under wanna pressure. Be, we're not going to drop my dad's name anymore before he hurts both of us. No. <laughs> I'll, look, I'll, him and I are tight. I'm going to send this to him, and he'll be fine. Yeah, I just, I just, it's certain like that. It's just like some things are funny, which was funny that moment, but I was like, do you want to be a comic or do you want to be a cop? 
You know how bored you'd be as a, I know. As a, a cop? Like, but that's my point about a minister. You know, you could be funny, but like I, now I know when I see you as a police officer, you're a prankster now. But humor... So I, now when I ever see you, I'm not going to have that same respect for you because now like you just do pranks. Humor is very underrated, though, and mm. as far as getting a message across. We talk about it with advertising. We feel like if we have funny ads for an ad campaign, it's going to do so much better. Uh, people discount creative a lot of the time. It's a little Correct. plus one. It's a little extra something to whatever more, it is you're doing. It may get more it's organic nice. shares right. on, on anything than your whole ad, ad spin together if you do it correctly, right? So I think, yeah, funny being funny. I guess I guess so, the so art of being a stand-up comic is just like when people take it lightly, that's when I'm just like, mm, that, so that's, what that's right, where right. I'm getting right. it. So you know I'm going to say working humor, hard. use humor to your advantage. Just know, just stay in your pocket. Like, don't... Correct. <laughs> I, I'm not slapstick, so I don't really do it. You know, like, I'm not... I'm not crazy, over the top, silly. I am like to my kids because right. they, they think it's funny, but they're two. So it's like, I I kind of know where I'm at stand up wise with the vo- the voice I've tried to make, and you still keep working on it. But it's like people will think that they gotta do something different, and I always tell them I had to teach like a humor, uh, how to be funny in the business world. We tried this out as like a session just to see if how they go have have legs and I well Crickets. guess what you guys uh, you guys aren't gonna believe this but I didn't prepare um, <laughs> just like my stand up you probably planned to though um, I put no, it in your calendar I wrote wait, some wait, notes wait, wait. I wrote some <laughs> notes we came back from my wife shooting her first special or special her first uh, TV appearance oh laughs laughs when she was nine months pregnant with her yes, first kid. I remember that one. And then I had to fly. We flew, flew back in that morning. I think I went directly to this thing. So it was like, it was, uh, my butthole was pretty puckered the whole time we were uh, in uh, going to do that because it was the last day she could fly. Kind of right. Um, and every, Lesson one. And then everybody's giving her like eye rolls and shit. Like, ugh. I can't believe you're on a plane, kind of shit. Oh, because she's nine months pregnant. Mm. Right. But it was like, no, the doctor said, we checked... I think we went out of our way to tell like three people. <laughs> like, don't look at her like that. It was fine. We checked it out. She's okay. Is that Allie Wong? <laughs> yeah. She really blew up her spot. I know. Bad time. The odds of it. <laughs> so, so uh, we, uh, I, I did this course because I, I, I thought about it a lot. What would I do? How would I talk? I, and I would say like be twenty percent a little bit more of yourself, kind of thing. That was right. kind of my only only rule because that's how I feel about stand up. It's like I don't. How I talk on here is a little bit more is a little heightened from normally, right? Correct. If I'm into a conversation, I'm going to be a little bit more uh, a little engaged and have kind of uh, pre- pregnant pauses, like some of this rants I go on. But for stand up, it's a little bit more than this, right? right. So call this podcast ten percent more. Call stand up a little bit twenty percent because you got to be in the zone. You got to see what's going on. You have to be totally present with what's going on. I think that stand up has changed now that people are more buying into the person instead of the jokes now. Sure. Like, you know, sure. it's more the more open you are and that's the brand. I, yeah. Like when I moved up to New York, I was just like, there's a lot of these people just talk about their lives all the time. Like who like who cares about you, your parents right now? Like who cares? Like you wouldn't establish that you're funny now. Right, right, right. Down well, south is more like you're funny first, then you start talking about your life. Well, one thing we were talking about right before we started is you're you're opening for Dan Cummings, who yes. I've nerded out on his Time Suck podcast. It's really I brought it up a bunch on this podcast. Really great podcast, but I could see I could hear it through the intro where he'd be like, "I'm in these cities," mm-hmm. and then he does the updates at the end of the podcast too, and he'll <laughs> like I can feel the frustration a little bit through. Through the context of what he's saying, but like, you know, some people are showing up. They don't know he does stand up. Right. <laughs> so right. Some people are showing up because they're flat earthers, because uh, it's called the Flat Earth Tour, and it's that's a, it's a uh, tongue in cheek kind of, uh, title. Sells right. tickets. Well, it's it's funny. It's like I, I wonder how many more tickets he's pushed because it's called the Flat Earth Tour. It's got to be a handful of people to show. You know. Yeah. Uh, that are just. Wow. I know it's packed, and he stays. He stays at the end too, and he takes pictures of all the fans, everything else, chops it up with them. People are having like beers with him. But stuff. it's interesting. His uh, so m- a lot of people know him as a stand-up, and now he's got some recent success just doing from this podcast. That's kind of uh, by my my eyes is kind of on fire. It's like a podcast that you don't see this kind of like nothing to I don't know one of the top podcasts probably out there. I'd say mm-hmm. right now. Um, 
in like a year and a half, two years. And so it's weird because his brand to a lot of people is that. And they're, you're saying they're, some people get disappointed because he's not talking about Hercules or... Uh, That's what they're yelling out. Hercules? They're yelling out that. They're yelling out... Um, really? They're yelling out a lot of stuff at the he did, one on, he did one on Atlantis and like... Uh, or um, Bermuda Triangle. Uh, he's at the end of his set, he Biggie does that. Biggie Tupac was one of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, that at was the end, he does that. Everyone's yelling out stuff. Yeah, it's just weird, but they only know him as that, and they're just waiting for that kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, but like he's funny on the thing. That's the other part, too. You Bert Kreishner, too. Some of them are just waiting for the story at the end. Sure. The machine. Yeah, was yeah. the machine. Yeah, and, he, and I could see it in his face, just like, God damn it. <laughs> it's and a 17-minute story. But <laughs> Every I think, show. But, he's, but I guess since that's how the people met you, Everything else is a bonus now. Yeah. So he like you can probably see him live when he's just like I'm gonna tell the machine at the end of the story at the end of the night yeah. I'll do the machine mm-hmm. I get everything else but it's like you're like oh okay yeah good so now it's like all right we'll enjoy the show. That's crazy. He has to do that just yeah. to keep it quiet. You think about it though. You're, he said he did it after the special too. He shot one in Philly and then there, he he had to do that as like the encore. There's, <laughs> there's too many people like what the fuck. <laughs> we need the machine. But I, I get it and just like being a pastor and kind of bringing it to that is like. The pastors probably tell the same parable. Some of them do. Well, Jesus told the same message the whole time. He didn't research it up. He told the same message the whole time. As a comic, you just feel blessed. I knew, didn't mean to use blessed because we're talking about church, but like you, you feel super grateful that you have the opportunity. At the same time, you're frustrated that you can't. You feel like you're pigeonholing yourself. It's a weird duality. I think for me... When I move, I think I've learned more. I'm more like a faith dude now. Like, I was really more just... Faith? Faith. Oh. Faith. Straight faith. I thought faith. that was a different kind of faith. Yeah, not faith, Evan. Shout out to Biggie Smalls. And, uh, I just listen, I I'm going to need another I sheet of paper. I plead the faith. Uh, yeah, she uh, she actually <laughs> just married one of the producers. Remember that song? It's Bone and Biggie, Biggie. It's Bone yeah. and Biggie, Oh, yeah. Biggie. Bone oh, yeah. Thugs. The producer, his name is Stevie J, right? That's yeah. one of my all-time... You probably heard that dude, Stevie J. One of my all-time favorite Hibop, songs. Whatever. Eric's so rap you know. stopped like in 99. So you know that, yeah. The producer that's, that's married his, that's Biggie. Sweet song. Uh-huh. That's a That's the song. He that's just the song. married Biggie's ex-wife. Biggie's <gasps> wife. It all comes full circle. Is Biggie yeah. alive? What do you think? He can't do it. I don't know where he is, but uh, this is... Uh, I don't think he faked his death, so I don't know what you he was You can't hide Biggie. You can hide Tupac. He's, He's been smaller, dead, what, 20 years? Yeah. 20 it's years. Crazy. His wife can move on. All right. uh, I hope my lady doesn't move on. Anything happens to me, I hope that she doesn't move on. Oh, you know that is, is your lady with you in New York? By the no. way, uh, no, no, no. I should have thrown your New York hat out of here uh, as you were. Oh, walking. yeah. Honestly, I had Yankees this, hat. I have an extra Tampa hat. Dude. Can I give you one? Uh, yeah, I had this Fidel Castro hat that a I was wearing. podcast. But I was rushing to get here, so I was just like, shh, 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 coming inside. That shouldn't even be in the wardrobe. Uh, yeah, but I got it for five dollars. So I'm gonna give you a Tampa hat on the way out. Mm. Thanks, I appreciate. it. Is it blue? I, uh, we've got a navy blue one in there. I'll get you. I'll get you that. Thanks, what, what's your hat that. size? Uh, I think a seven three eighths. I think seven, three five. I've got a horse head. We surprisingly have the same head size. My head's big, but it's Pause. not. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. I think it's so. that it's anvil not girth- head. It's, it's all girthy. squinched together. Yeah, it's like Peyton Bill. Manning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Peyton, and Papa John. Shout out to both of them. Eli, you know Hunter, Hunter Manning. No one talks about him. That was Cooper. Cooper, Cooper Manning, that's, that's what I meant. Damn it. I knew it was a southern <laughs> ER <laughs> name. checker. <laughs> right, Cooper. Whatever. The smart uh, one. Yeah. So, what's uh, a, what's your advice? Be entrepreneurial. What You're a very disciplined guy, right? right. We, I feel like that's a lot of doing. Wanting to do your own thing, hustle, uh, that's a lot of its discipline. Any advice for the youngins? Doesn't have to be stand-up. Just you teach the youngins. Right. I say always be willing to learn something. Yeah. Be open to learn something because I think comedy has evolved now where you have to learn a new trait. Now it's just like I have to have this presence, but I feel like you can still stay to who you are, and it's hard seeing sometimes older comics do what younger comics are doing. What do you mean? Because you feel like they're above it. Like some comics, painful. See, right? It's painful seeing like a, a comic that you respected trying to do an Instagram sketch in 60 seconds. <laughs> and that is the hardest thing. They just thing. don't got it. That is the hardest thing for me watching. So for Kyle Dunnigan's. <laughs> Some of them are really funny. Yeah, but he's the... Yeah, yeah, you can 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 talk to your fans, but sometimes it's really hard when you see like an older comic with all these young comics trying to make like videos to appeal to younger kids. I'm just like... Because someone's like, you got to do that shit. Right. I'm just like, people are going to... People out there still respect comedy. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still build a brand doing it the old... Not even the old-fashioned way, but you can do do everything you want, but you don't have to do what these young comics are doing because they... 
these young comics are machines. Like I met this dude like when Cam, you know Cam Bertrand. Cam was trying out for a while and now we met all these like Instagram dudes. Shout out to Cam. Two are doing uh the videos he and looks their like regiment. <laughs> he got his hair now. <laughs> he hates Shout that. out to Hillary. <laughs> Shout out to Swank. Clinton. She I won an Oscar, man. She went Look to a what? Someone Google Cam Bertrand and uh, Hillary Swank and tell you mean me I'm not. Someone Google. No, what whoever's no, no, whoever's listening. Oh. Google it. Tell me he doesn't look exactly like her. Yeah, all right, I, save I that for later. <laughs> Where are we going? What are we talking? About? We're we're talking about the youngins. They're machines. Wild now. So so like I talked to one of them. I talked to one of them. He's talking about how many videos he puts out. He goes, I got a crew, I got everything like this. So every Monday we're putting out content. We gotta put out content. And that's how we get my followers. And he goes, if I don't do it, someone else is doing the video. I was like, so you guys are pretty much doing just like stand up comics, but you're putting all your energy you're burning into it. these videos. Mm-hmm. But they're not comics, though. They'll let you know. They're not stand ups. Like, mm-hmm. we're just doing this to build out. And I respect that. I was like, this is what you do. You do really, really well. That's great, you know? Because, yeah. like, an improver, he's probably really good at improv, but he'd make him do stand up. He might be a little, you know what I mean? If that's not his base. If you make a stand up person do improv, well, they're the opposite modes. Unless you do all three. Back in the day, a comic had to do everything. Mm. You had to write, you had to sing, you had to dance, you had to do all that stuff. Play the guitar. You, were you didn't the have Navy competition, seat. though. It's, it's, it, the, comp- the competition, just the sheer quantity of people. How many think, How many people do you think do in stand-up? I always like this number. How many people do you think do stand-up in New York? Like, consider themselves a comedian. Like, we'll put it on their Facebook. 3,000. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot that's of That's pretty fucking crazy. I would right. say 3,000. It's probably 300 when the improv started. You know, right. maybe, and that's like people are crooners and like yeah, and like uh, vaudeville guys. They, they, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a whole amalgam of way different stuff, uh, show tunesy kind of people. Now it's like you got these guys that dabble in it; they're taking spots, but you can't get mad at that. People, I don't know why people think there's a scarcity of places. You can just make your own shit. There's like, room for everybody. There's room. Right. I, I I respect the comics that you know that crossover because some one of some of them one told me goes. He goes, I'm not a stand-up comedian, but this club's giving me $5,000 to put on a show there because I have a big fan base. Sure. Goes, so I'm just going to host a show. I was like, oh, that's cool. He's yeah, just going to host and bring everything and everything else. I was like, okay, I get that. But I think it's like like for us, like not to learn something. I had to learn like another tool about my stand-up. I realized, like, oh, it's a whole lot easier if I talk about myself in the beginning to let people know, oh, this is what I do for a living. So people are like, oh, okay, he's a teacher. Instead of waiting to like 20 minutes in you to wanna, say. You want to get like, they need a, a thumbnail of you. Like, yeah, connect, like a little, that's connect. what I learned. I was like, oh, wow. As soon as I get to it faster, I was like, like I get more laughs. I was like, oh, I just got to get to it faster now. Yeah, because you can't really put you together. Like, you can try to profile you, the who you are by what you look like, but you're not coming up with uh, flannel and no sleeves on. Well, and like, People want to, they want to know what they're dealing with immediately. Right, right. They're right. going to judge and but make that decision one way or another. And the you best might way, as well control the message. The best and, that's way what I, and that's what I had to learn. I had to get out of my ways to be like, no, I'm here. I think the good thing was when I came to Tampa, it was just like I was kind of like no one really knew me like that. So I had to do the get to know people like that. So when I moved to New York, it didn't really get and hurt me that bad of starting from the bottom because I've done it before. So it's like being a walk on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, you're not going to get. Wow. Of course, there's like there's red shirts from different states. That Comedy are like, special name. Right. There's different walk on people from right. different states that have done all these festivals. Like if Fernandez went to New York, he'd be a red shirt freshman because he's done. You know, he's done these festivals, so he knows comics and everything else. But for me, I was just going up there, no credits. At Matt Fernandez. Just, you know? yeah. Shout out to Fernandez. Like he's actually dropping a special Saturday, uh, recording his first tonight. comedy special tonight. Shout out to you, Matt. Shout out to you getting back with your lady. We support all that. Roll tight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How dare you drop a roll tight in this office? In roll tight. Roll bama. Or uh, damn eagle, man. Come uh, on. Go East Carolina. Go Pirates. We're going to make right. it 2-12 you, and 12 you, this year. You brought it full circle with the uh, walk on, I think. Because we're, where, where are we at? We're 40 something. What did we stop yeah. at? A minute? I mean, well, we're hour? trying to figure out the best sweet spot. I think when Eric and I are doing it solo, we're trying to keep him 33. When we got a good guest such as, your, your, as yourself, we're, uh, we're trying to just let it roll and just see where it goes. But I thought that was a good button to put in. Yeah. Unless you got more, more, uh, more stuff to tell us. This is what I want to say. Shout out to your fans. How many fans do you guys got? Thirty hundred millions. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean it. It toggles between a million or two. I don't know. To everybody watching this, uh, shout out to these two gentlemen. You guys, are great. If you want to follow me, Twitter, Facebook, same thing. Dutch Blackfoot. If you're looking for me, because you're Dutch. Uh, great name. Yeah. Shout oh, out. We to didn't the even talk about you being Dutch. Growing up in the Netherlands. You Anti know shout I mean? out to Zartwell Pete. Mm. Wait, real quick. How long did you live in the <laughs> Netherlands? Whoa. <laughs> Do you know what that is? No. 
<laughs> I ignored you. I've never obviously. brought that up with you, actually, and yeah. I'm surprised because it's it's so uh, <laughs> it's so not cool to bring up. But <laughs> well, now you're going to tell me. Oh, give it, him the story. It's uh, so it's a Santa Claus's. Uh, Black helper. Yeah. And, oh no. But they still they still do parades in uh, the Netherlands. Yeah. And uh, and it's like it's the same one black, black guy. His name no. is Sinterklaas. Oh. Sinterklaas. It looks like Al Jolson like parade. So like his character is a little slave, and that's the most popular character throughout the book. So all these people dress up in blackface and walk throughout the Netherlands. And it's like supposed to be in like if you see the pictures, you're like that is so fucked up. But over there, it's no, not. No, it's because we like him. Yeah. he's our favorite. That's what they're like. Yeah, they really like him. So uh, imagine what happens when I become a star. You know what I mean? What are they gonna do? They probably just have this little voice defects and stuff like that that they're doing. Uh, <laughs> who knows? I hit a I hit a sensitive one. I didn't know. One one dude told me he goes, you know, you sound like Q Tip. I said, you know, that's my dad. And he like froze and goes, what? I said, that's my dad. Yeah, I was there when they did. It's believable. West album. And he was like asking me like, what was he like? I said, like, he hit me a lot. And like, <laughs> <laughs> fucking asshole. And he was just sitting there like very distraught the whole time. And I was like, yeah, that's my dad. I'll call him right now. And he goes, dude, your dad's Q-tip. I was like, yeah. And I had to stop because for a while he was like, why really? did he beat you? Because I lost my wallet, in El Segundo. <laughs> He was just, he was like very, I guess that was his favorite rapper, so you can tell he was just like, and I was like, I'm just joking, I don't know Q-Tip, man. Hey, man, he used to be one of my Should've favorites. just left it. Uh, yeah, I thought about it, but he looked too invested into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ruining lives. Too invested into it. Uh, but wrap everything up. You don't have any more advice? Usually, so Advice, have, I would tell people, I would tell people, um, you, believe it. You usually get more fired up as you go. I really get fired up. I love doing that. I would tell people sometimes... We can go, I'll give a biblical advice and I'll give like a regular advice. Regular advice is you got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself and you got to realize that you're your worst enemy and you're going to be your best cheerleader. You know what I mean? Okay. Have people in your team that are smarter than you, some dumber than you. You Sounds know what like I mean? F- you read the four agreements or something. Uh, 48 Laws of Power. Okay. Uh, Genesis 12. But um, I think, I think, it's, I think it's good to always learn from people. Learn, learn from people. And be willing to teach someone. Because when you can teach somebody, you know what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Even if you teach somebody wrong, you're still teaching someone. <laughs> teaching you know I mean? yourself how stupid you are. You know what I mean? I agree with that. Teaching, I, that's part of this podcast, too, is like it, when you have to teach, you, ha- you actually have to relearn something or learn it again or get better knowledge on it, a subject or whatever. So Working hard. I, I was listening to um, this. Uh, they, they're talking to Joe Jackson. Rest in peace, Joe Jackson. Uh, head Why? Of the Jackson Shoeless? Legacy. Fuck that guy. Why? What happened? You he used to beat the kids up. What you didn't get a spanking growing up? No, I did. You get a spanking get growing beat. up? I think what it is went, the beating? Think, there were no videos. You are talking about Michael Jackson's dad, Michael right? Michael Jackson's dad. Yeah, not okay. the other. Joe not Jackson. shoeless Joe Jackson. Okay, <laughs> but all right. No, <laughs> I think it was worse than just beating, wasn't it? Look, you gotta think. A, no, I think they might have chemically up. castrated times Michael. Times are different. Look, know, times are different. That out there. Times are different than Don't what. Don't be a black grown. apologist. I'm not. Times are different, but what they Cosby's not that bad. I didn't say that, but Gary. But you know what I'm saying, like. But Gary, Indiana is the roughest ghettos in the freaking world. Doesn't excuse it. Doesn't excuse it. But if he didn't do it, where would his kids be? Uh, not musicians. Well, Michael's not maybe alive. alive. Michael's alive? dead. So like what? three of them are dead. So no, maybe only alive. one. Only one of them's dead. Uh uh-uh, oh, Michael and um. There's, Who else? There's another one. One no. of the other. No, one they're of the all alive. lesser known ones. Ronald. Jackson. No, they're all alive. Man. Ronnie. <laughs> no, there's Ronnie's no Ronnie. Dead as a doornail. They're talking to Joe. They're talking to Joe Jackson, and like it was before he went. Dude his was a total bed. piece of shit. They're talking to Joe Jackson, and they asked him this. Produ- this interviewer asked him. He goes, "Hey, who was the best singer in your family?" And like everyone got pissed at this reporter. I'm like, why would you ask that freaking question? Right. And then Joe goes, Me. the best singer in my family was Jermaine Jackson. And everybody's like, what the freaking, yeah. why the F would you say? Like Michael. And he goes, you it wasn't Michael. That's what he goes. He goes, no, he goes, it wasn't Michael. And he goes, but Jermaine, he goes, Jermaine had the best voice, but Michael outworked Jermaine. Okay. So I was just like, wow, I never knew that the, the guy was, you know Or what maybe I mean? Michael had the best voice and he was trying to motivate Michael. Yeah. Or you Jermaine. hear that, Michael? Yeah. Or Jermaine Jermaine's has better. the best voice. That's pretty much back to it. You know, it's like, don't let no one outwork you. You know what I mean? Even if you're the best at your craft, there's a lot of great comments, but a lot of you people just brought work up better. Any other example? <laughs> it's because uh, you guys are white and you don't respect Joe Jackson. You know what I mean? But well, Bo he Jackson his beats kid his white. kids too. He wanted to make his kid white. Bo eventually. Jackson beats his kids. That's how, Bill Lockwood. How man. dare you? How Bo dare Jackson beats his kids? Well, find me that article. Go you, Google it right now. You do now. not besmirch Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson I feel Jackson very beats uncomfortable his kids. right now. Bo about Jackson, Jackson beats his kids. Bo, if you're listening, I know you're a fan. Uh, Bo Jackson beats his kids. He does not know what he's And he has a crossbow and he scares him. I know. It's on ESPN. Well, that, I know he does. That. Yeah. That's on ESPN. I want to do that shit. 
But uh, F, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I guess it's it's always good to get out of your get out of your thing, get out of your comfort zone. I think all the comics at least to stay together. I think the Tampa Saints should stay together. The strength in numbers. Yeah, you know I think I, mean? I think we all hit a growth period at the same time where a lot of guys just split, uh, left town. But I think every I still talk to a lot of a lot of the guys that left. You know, not you, but like but mentor the young ones, man. That's what you. I'm be not up. on the scene as much. I you I, should be on the scene. Man. I've got a company to run that's uh, that takes a lot of time, and I've got this, and I've got my house, so. Um, stand what about stand up? To I'm the side, do, I'm doing the improv next week for a weekend, but you know, I can't, I can't take the at bats I want. Do you think it's fair to take to take dates from comics that are working hard every night? Who says I haven't worked hard? I still write. Still write, yeah. I write, I, you know, I used to write for this a little bit more. Do you think you should be in front of a stage and work the craft? Do you think so? Yeah. This that keeps me. This keeps me. He's fresh. getting at something. I don't know. Yeah, he's he's telling he's me I need to get up more. But yeah, rope that's open you. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like wrestling, man. Two kids, man. It's I get, tough. I get it. I get it's two kids. I get it's tough, but people look up to you, man. People want to see you in the scene. You Not know? me. Uh, yeah, they do. People who wrestle lost. No, like, yeah, go no, find them. I don't think so. You don't think, dude? So? There's a whole new crop of people. I, don't, I have no idea who they are. Like, it's it's weird. It's because I got out. I basically kind of the last year haven't gone up nearly as much. And but then, people need your advice. You've been through it before. People what, to can get benef- to the bottom. People can <laughs> benefit. People can benefit from your advice and stand up what. To to do inside the city, where to move around and stuff like that, you know? They'll hear, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, but <laughs> I'm saying, like, you just don't want to do it. No, I do. I actually really do. I, it, you have this weird guilt after a while, and this is with anything you really want to do. Like, stand up really pushes this message hard from the older comics is like, you got to get up every night. And for a while, it was really tough to not, to, when I started going, okay, I really need to focus on family, uh, work. Uh, and and then this podcast started kind of bubbling up more and more, kind of replaced a little bit of that creative area for me. But uh, dude, that's why I could never do it. Stand up. That's the unsung property of stand up comics is going out every night. Just leaving the house for me every night would be like, oh fuck that. Like I don't want to. Like, I, I couldn't do it. Like well, the hardest thing getting to the gym is just getting to the right, gym. Once right. you get there, you're going to do something when you yeah, get there. Yeah, sure. It's a lot of hours too, and it's uh, when your wife already hates your guts. It's really <laughs> tough. <laughs> it's really tough to justify. Shout out to it. Law's wife. Bro. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll you can start that. your own room. Your wife's a comic too. You guys can start your own room. Not much Have, anymore. I mean, we both were like, "What's more important?" Kind of thing. Breaks my heart, man. It does. Do- it breaks. My it doesn't heart. mean I don't do it, and I don't. I still consider myself a comic, and I'm still writing. It's the thing of like, it's uh, it, it's down to pure hours. It reminds me of I know we got dude. I, you know I used to bring my laptop to open mics. And I remember while I was there. Like it, it reminds me tough. of re- wrestling, right? You, are you a wrestling fan a little bit? Not anymore, but well, yeah. I mean, so so yes. You, you remember name the wrestlers that you remember growing up? Oh, Stone Cold, Cold Steve, Steve Austin, Austin the, the Rock. Rock. Who else we got? Uh, Mankind. Correct. All time great. Now think about it like that, right? We got all these wrestlers, right? We got Stone Cold Steve Austin, Mankind. They did a lot for stand up, right? I mean, they did a lot for wrestling. Mm-hmm. But now they're not active anymore. Do you think it's fair for them to still come at WrestleMania and take spots from the guys that are grinding it out every night and stuff like that? Well, Even yeah, though they've done a lot for the but sport. But if they showed up, it would be like, oh shit, The Rock is back, and they're doing it That's for. That's what I'm saying. You know, we're not talking about a, we're talking about a hosting a weekend, which is not that prestigious. <laughs> not that, but in this town, it's prestigious. In this town, a lot of people never played that theater before. Yeah, well, but they also you know. suck too. So it's, there's a lot of guys that suck, and they don't know they suck. Just, but yeah, but I think that if you I think if you I think there's some guys that need mentoring, and they would benefit more. I did it. Guys. I was doing it. I've mentored uh, my ears off. I've I. Fuck, this whole podcast is free advice no one asked for, <laughs> as I like to say. That's the new tagline. Yeah, I mean, I it, <laughs> our slogan's pragmatic business advice with dick jokes, and then, right. you know, this. my whole thing is uh, going around going, hey, I think you should do this, this, and this, and I know it's annoying. I but took it. Remember it, you told me about the, the whale bit? I did it. Yeah. But I needed no. it. I need, yeah, that's what you did. You told me, like, you got to go full whale, man. You got to go full whale. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, good point. I got to get into character. I get it now. Oh Jerry's, yeah, yeah, because yeah. you're going, you're, uh, you're edging yourself. Yeah, and that's what. But I mean, imagine you're if about you to come and then you didn't, and then you're like, uh, and then you hurt yourself. What did Jerry Seinfeld said? He says the comedy. He said comedy purifies itself. Hmm. Purifies itself. So Deep. that's why when I moved, I was like, I don't have to say anything anymore because everyone out there is trying to, you know what I mean. But just you want to take pride in where you started stand up at. So I'm just proud of like Tampa Comics, and I just want the best for them. All right, you let's get you a hat. 
you know what I mean? TB hat. hat. All right, you guys. All this, right. When are you guys dropping this tonight? Um, we drop it. Take that hat off, baby. Not ever. Yeah, that's true. Tuesdays, we, Wednesdays. We, can we can we do like a cops blur out on the New York? Hey, yes. free Joe like, Jackson, OJ Simpson. We see you. Come on us out there. Free OJ. Oh, we'll have to cut off that. <laughs> <laughs> OJ Simpson, he's free. Shout out to Zartwell Pete. Uh, we're out.